Welcome to this short video where I wanted to come to you and talk to you about our Together in the Word reading plan. We have been journeying through this plan for a little over six months, so it means we've got about a year and a half left to go. Um, but there's a few things I wanted to come to you and share. Now, I know there's been some questions in the July reading plan. Why are we starting over in Psalms? Well, the, the short answer is that this is very typical for most reading plans, is that throughout the duration of the reading plan, you do go through Psalms and Proverbs repeatedly. And also, when I was designing this reading plan, what I really wanted to do is make it accessible for everybody. And so you, if you bear with me as I kind of talk through the process of a little bit of how I developed this plan, if you think about if we didn't have Psalms and Proverbs that we were reading, we would be reading a larger chunk of scripture each day. Meaning if we were reading, often Bible reading plans will do Old and New Testament. That's also a really pertinent way to uh, read through the Bible. But sometimes then you're reading up to five or six chapters a day. And so culminating with, I wanted to lengthen this over two years to make it accessible for everybody. That is why we're reading through Psalms and Proverbs repeatedly. So I encourage you to approach each round of reading those scriptures with a fresh set of eyes, even intentionally taking time to pause and say, okay, God, show me what you want me to see this time in this reading, not necessarily even the notes that I took last time uh, or a distraction by the fact that I have to read this again. It's an invitation to go through these books numerous times to see what God wants to tell you each and every time. Now, where we're at in this time in the middle of July, we are entering into the book of 1 Kings. We started that last week. And so now we're into Kings and Chronicles. That's what's up next on the docket. And if you've ever read these books before, they might be confusing in the fact that they tell you about the same kings, the same point in history, but the Kings books and the Chronicles books sometimes tell different parts of the puzzle, if you will. One way to look at this that I heard recently from a rabbinical teacher is that the Kings books really focused on the moral failures of the Kings. And most likely this was written during the exile period when Israel was exiled and wanted to kind of almost sort out the details of what ended them, what led to them being where they were. And it's really easy to point fingers at the kings, but the kings were just the ones that led the people into this situation, right? The, the people had to almost acknowledge their own part in the sinfulness and the sinful patterns of idolatry. And we really see that idolatry becomes a huge problem for Israel, almost more than any other time in their history. And, but yet at the same time, we see God continuing to bring that promise that he made to David and ultimately back all the way to Abraham. We see that woven throughout these stories. And so that is what kind of the book of King, first and second Kings looks like, um, just to kind of give you an idea. But then as we move into Chronicles, yes, these are the same Kings that we're going to have details. Most likely what I heard in reference to these books is that they were written further after um, the initial books of first and second Kings were written kind of almost as a looking back, but more importantly, it was written almost to the post, the post exiles. So the exiles that were coming back out of Babylon, coming back to the land. And that is why we see a lot of the genealogies. We see a lot of the more almost logistical pieces of what the Kings did because they'd already written about the moral failures. They'd already been warned about that kind of aspect of things. But moving into Chronicles, we see a lot more of the details, the economy, uh, things like that, that we'd get a different piece of the puzzle. And if we think back to our own history, when we look back at things, it's different when you write it like 10 years after something happens versus 50 years after it happens. You have a different perspective and neither one of them are wrong, but you have almost a looking back, this is what is, this is what stands out to me at this point. And so that is a little bit of a different perspective on the books of Kings and Chronicles that will hopefully help you kind of dive in and look for those themes. Look for the themes of idolatry, yet God's continuing promising of to the line of David that he will have a king on the throne. And then also when we move into Chronicles that there is just um, almost a more emphasis on the priests and the Levitical order as well. So you can keep a look for that, but also God's reformation for them, that he continues to provide an opportunity for repentance and he does not fail them even when they go into exile. So I just wanted to kind of give you a snapshot of both 
how we kind of worked through setting up this reading plan as well as just a little oomph into what the books of Kings and Chronicles kind of help you navigate. And as always, if you have any questions, if you would like to discuss anything, because I know, I don't know about you, but I am all wrapped up in Solomon right now and I'm totally confused as to why he went back to Egypt to find a wife. Like warning flags, red, you know, red flags going off everywhere when I saw that. I'm like, why? Why are you the wise man that goes back to Egypt when God told you not to? So. I always have lots of ideas. I would love to hear from you what has stood out to you as you've been reading through these books. What is what is God showing you about himself as he takes you through this story of his people and what he did for them and how he continued to redeem them and restore them even when they continued to fail. So uh, blessings to you today. I will be back who knows when with another video, but I will be back at some point to give us kind of another oomph in our reading plan. And thank you so much for being on this journey. And if you haven't yet dove into this, or maybe you started out with us back when we were in Genesis in January, and you're like, hey, I've got out of the, the rhythm of that, but I want to dive back in. You can dive back in anytime, even halfway through a month. All you need to do is follow the link in the video description below and that will take you to our website and you can download the monthly reading plan and every month kind of the last week of the month we update that reading plan and it gets posted all the places that we need to have it posted so feel free to dive in and maybe even invite somebody to come along on this journey with you because we do have about a year and a half left to go before we re finish reading the whole bible um so stay tuned to that and we will uh, touch base with you soon